What's up, Ego Hackers? This is Chase with csjoseph.life. Do another episode for season 22. Uh, this is episode 3. What are the cognitive transitions uh, for ENTJs? Uh, the ENTJ is known as the martial type or the chief uh, by some circles. Uh, their structure type, uh, you know, looking at them from a type grid, uh, direct, initiating, control, control being the very outcome focused, initiating being they go to other people, direct is that they, uh, they give commands to others, uh, uh, they uh, just state what they mean, mean what they say, they're not being indirect, which has additional subtext or uh, additional explanation behind what they're saying, uh, they choose their role in the conversation, etc., and then uh, their, uh, and that's their communication style, direct initiating control, which makes them a structure-oriented uh, uh, type of the 16 archetypes. And then uh, their uh, disposition, a.k.a. temperament, is um, they are very pragmatic, so they're very independent. Uh, they do what they want, basically, to the point where people can actually accuse them of being impulsive. Uh, They are also uh, abstract, open to the what if, open to the possibilities, Uh, and they're also systematic, which means they are devoted to finding the best way of doing something, the most efficient way, the most cost-effective way. I mean, they they literally live in the world of, you know, cheap, fast, or right. Only pick two, right? So they want things to be done right, so if it's going to be done cheaply, then that means it's going to take a long time. Or if it's going to be done quickly and right, then it's going to cost a lot, etc. And the ENTJ just basically bounces back and forth between both of these realms, uh, or all three of these realms, I guess. Uh, so that being said, uh, they are uh, so that that uh, that's their disposition. So they are an intellectual disposition, an NT, uh, as a result. And their virtue and vice uh, is uh, basically uh, generosity versus charity, uh, which is really, really important, generosity versus charity. Uh, But then furthermore, um, what is the purpose of the martial type? What's the purpose of the ENTJ? The purpose is to basically be the number one executor of all the types. They just get it done. They get shit done, and they get it done well. Um, So well that uh, ENTJs, at least from a career standpoint, entrepreneurship standpoint, they can literally join a company, take over that company uh, from the inside out and lead that company uh, indefinitely. And we actually saw this very recently uh, with the CEO, John Ferner, who became CEO of Walmart uh, recently. And uh, he started out as just a a part-time associate at Walmart, and he was able to play the game of power and the game of influence such that he took over as CEO uh, for Walmart. And Walmart couldn't be happier, especially with all the announcements that they've been making in recent days. Another example of uh, the Marshall, but this time from history, uh, would be Napoleon. Uh, Napoleon was an ENTJ, and uh, uh, he always uh, led from the front, and that's an, another example of ENTJ execution. No one can execute better than ENTJs, but that's why ENTJs, you know, they always have to be in a program or they always have to go get, you know, get some motivation from a motivational speaker because they're the chief of the village, right? They're the marshal who leads their village, leads their platoon, leads their clan, leads their company, etc. Uh, and they need to go to the shaman for that spiritual or that vision uh, that they need to make sure that their vision is righteous so that they can continue to be the chief of their village, basically. Uh, this is why, you know, like, you know, an ENTP like myself or an INTP or an NP in general would be like the shaman of the village, whereas an ENTJ would be like the chief of the village. The weakness, uh, while this village is the strength, you know, and the strength is the pack, etc. From that point of view, and yes, I'm quoting Kelchrist Falconer. Even the shaman uh, would uh, would agree with me on that standpoint. Uh, the point is, is that for uh, uh, um, for ENTJs, is that like they're married to their village, they're married to their work, they're married to their company, you know, uh, 
and they can't leave, basically. They really can't leave, uh, and due to their ability to execute. The shaman can always leave and still have just as much influence, if not more influence, than the ENTJ, in as much as the ENTJ could have as much power, if not even more power, than the shaman, you know, or, you know, versus, you know as, a, as a marshal, you know, versus the shaman, or the chief versus the shaman, etc. But yeah. That's basically, in the nutshell, you know, foundationally what an ENTJ is. That's their purpose in life, to be like the master uh, executor, right? Which, it's funny, because if you compare ENTJs to INTJs, that's not exactly how INTJs work. INTJs can execute, but they really just can execute one thing at a time. It's not many things at once, per se, although they can do it. It just kind of stresses them out, leads them down the road to procrastination, etc., uh, and that's more because they have that performance anxiety that's holding them back, whereas an ENTJ does not. They have SE child, and they just want to childishly show everything or show off literally everything that they've done and show it to people uh, to get that uh, really positive SI-related feedback that they're looking for to get the attention of others because that's what X-rated sensors do. They want attention, but uh, you know, an SE child wants as much attention as they can possibly get from all sources, whereas SE Inferior wants all the attention it can get from one source, right? And this is why, you know, you have uh, INTJs being finishers, you know, versus, you know, the ENTJ being that in-charge executor uh, who, or executor, who is just amazing at getting the work done. And, uh, you know, and then they're rewarded for it. And that's why, you know, they are the most successful uh, chief uh, executive officer is out there. Um, and, uh, I honestly, it's kind of interesting because when you look at Steve Jobs working with Steve Wozniak, you have an ENTP, INTP relationship, but then they hired John Scully, an ENTJ who was running Pepsi at the time to run Apple. And then, uh, John Scully took over. Although eventually John Scully betrayed, uh, Steve Jobs at the board meeting, the infamous board meeting, uh, because John Scully was very concerned about his reputation and his ability to execute. And uh, John Scully made the same mistake every ENTJ makes, including Napoleon, because that's why he was defeated at Waterloo, is because he started treating people like numbers, like cattle. People are like cattle, and he took the people around him for granted. Um, And uh, because of that, you know, John Scully made decisions rationally with numbers, but he didn't consider the value of Steve Jobs and the vision. And that's a perfect example of the vision leaving the village. When the shaman leaves the village, and then the village is basically effectively cursed until the shaman returns to remove the curse. Why is that? Think about it this way. A blessing is when you get some, you get more in return than what you put into something. A curse is when you get less out of it than what you put in. And that's ultimately the state that Apple was in when uh, Apple went down in flames. John Scully fired Jobs. He was so concerned about his reputation. He was making decisions based on the numbers and not the people, not the vision. Uh, you know, and this is why ENTJs are amazing executors, but they're terrible at vision. And quite frankly, not that they'd like to admit it, but they are terrible at delegation. They're very terrible at delegation. ENTPs are far better at delegation to the point where they can actually over-delegate, which can be a problem. Whereas an, or an ENTJ, no, that's not necessarily the case. They don't have that issue. Um, you know, and, and as Steve Jobs found out when he became CEO of Apple again for the second time, he figured out proper delegation instead of over-delegating. And then he was able to basically change the world, which has allowed, allowed me to actually record this video for you right now on my iPhone. Uh, thank you, Mr. Steve Jobs. You've done humanity an amazing service. Uh, but John Scully went down in history as being the man who fired Steve Jobs. So understand that uh, you know sometimes ENTJs need to be willing to count the cost, and uh, they don't understand that opportunity cost also includes people. And we see this all the time when it comes to like their their cognitive transitions. You know, so let's actually talk about cognitive transitions. Uh, so four sides of the mind uh, for for ENTJs. So the ego is their ENTJ, and remember, folks, like, your type is literally whatever is your ego, because that's your primary. You're, you're always in your ego all the time. Uh, and then there's a higher level above that, which is the subconscious. Um, I, 
it's kind of like a, you could even say it's like a, a post-conscious thing, but it's still technically a subconscious. It's like, but it still requires a step up to really gain mastery of the subconscious. And the subconscious of the ENTJ is the ISFP, the artist, um, and uh, also known as the druid. And it's so interesting to watch that that marshal, that huge general of vast armies, literally become the druid of the forest. Uh, and uh, you know, realizing that you know maybe I need to have that spiritual experience and gain back the vision of what it was that I was trying to do by going off into the forest and meditating and taking some time alone and really understanding the value of reality and the value of uh, of the environment and recognizing that the war uh, that uh, the ENTJ Marshall ego is waging has uh, collateral damage and additional consequences to their actions, right? It's those consequences that can be very, very problematic. And, you know, people... People just need to be aware of these risks, you know, consistently, right? So, yeah, it's uh, it's stuff like that, um, you know, uh, people aren't aware of when it comes to, you know, like the ISFP subconscious. But then let's let's look at the uh, let's look at the INTP unconscious or shadow side of the mind, and that's known as the. Um, um, uh, the INTP or the engineer, and it's it's always really interesting to watch, you know, shadow focused ENTJs like engineer amazing solutions and create frameworks and models, and they package them up and, and sell them to others and coach others to be more successful in business, or they create those frameworks and models and engineer those solutions and execute them, you know, at whatever comp- company they're at and get things done, you know. This is really, really important. Why is that? Because ENTJs are triple pragmatic. And they're triple pragmatic not with their superego, but triple pragmatic with their ego and their subconscious and their shadow. This is super important because if an ENTJ is in a company, even if they're at like very low, low level, but they take the initiative and they only ask forgiveness and they never ask permission, but then they let their results speak for themselves because they have their amazing execution, an ENTJ can easily rise to the ranks of any company to literally become that you know that low-level associate to become the CEO. And you know what? This is exactly what happened to Napoleon. They kind of forced him, you know, the consulship. Basically, they forced him to come into power against his will because he was very good at execution, and he became a dictator. But he was he didn't want that position. But they told him to be in that position because they saw the value of what he was done doing and you know special exceptions were made this is funny because then i i i I look at estjs out there who also are te hero structure types like entjs and for some reason estjs out there think that you know if i just play it safe and and follow the rules you know then i'll have that comfy job i'll have that job security I'll become vice president one day or CEO one day, etc. And it's like, no, sorry, ESTJs, you're only at middle management, and I would only recommend you be placed at middle management. Like, what I say, what what I want in ESTJ and C-suite, maybe. Would I want them as like a chief of operations? Nope. At best, I'd put them as a chief of finance um, or some other random thing. Would I put them in charge of IT as a CIO or a CTO? No, no way. Would I ever do operations? Nope. Would I ever do the CEO? Nope, because at best they're middle management, so finance, and that's basically about it. That's the only C-suite position I'd ever put in ESTJ. Otherwise, they could be lazy at the VP level or at the director level, for example, because they're just not going to go anywhere. Why is that necessary? Well, I mean, if you think about it, like they're really good at being middle management because they get comfortable. That's the problem. Like. Uh, ESTJs naturally create oligarchy. That's like what they produce is oligarchy. And you look at the United States of America, it's an oligarchy. And, uh, you know, EST, and it's run by ESTJs. I mean, Obama is an ESTJ, for example. You know, um, it's really just run by ESTJs. And it, that's, that's, a severe, that's a severe issue um, because ESTJs got to be loyal to something. And 
but you know what they what they have in loyalty they lack in execution because ultimately ESTJs like every SI user is at risk of being stuck in their comfort zone. Well, that's the thing about ENTJs. They just don't care about their comfort zone. They really don't give a damn, which is pretty fantastic because that's what allows them. They sacrifice their own comfort because comfort doesn't mean anything for the sake of the best way of doing something without the need to follow the rules. So ENTJs, if you're watching this out there, if you want to be successful in business or successful where you're working, you want to rise through the ranks, never ask permission to do anything. Only ask forgiveness. And if a company fires you for taking risks, make sure you shake the dust off their feet on the door and recognize that they too are cursed. In the same way John Scully fired Steve Jobs from Apple, so also is a company who decides to fire you because you are doing the right thing. What was the right thing? You did what works. What was the thing that works? You know, that huge risk, that huge initiative that you took because you took the initiative and because you took the initiative, you became that much more successful and you made the company better. You made it more profitable. Think about it this way. Venture capitalism. I hate venture capitalism. I would like to state that, state that again. I hate venture capitalism because literally you have all of these, you know, STJ, NFP Quadra, Delta Quadra people, you know, who are pretty decent at sales, especially NFPs to convince other people to give them money and then for from a sales standpoint hey give me all this money you know all this money all this money they're literally nothing more than tony the tiger that's all they have they have no execution it's just a paper tiger their company's a paper tiger it's just a house of cards they don't actually have execution what at all and because they're this paper tiger they think they have this like traditional play it safe way you know i need i need money you know, from, from other people, I got to borrow money and go into debt. And I, that's just, that's just dumb. Like even this company, this company, like I started this company. I don't, I didn't go into debt for that. That's a lie. If anyone tells you, you have to like go into debt to get loans to start a company, you're out of your mind. Like seriously, you're out of your mind. Also, if you're hiring people based off of resumes only, you're out of your mind. Like what are you even doing? Okay. Well, ENTJs, they don't care about that that much. ENTJs run the risk of treating people like numbers and hiring people with the flashy resumes that aren't actually useful because the people with the flashiest resumes are the lazy STJ NFP Quadra. They look good on paper, but when it comes down to actual execution, they don't do anything. Like, operationally speaking, they're really only good in middle management, finance, and maybe sales, and that's it. Outside of that, there's really not much I'd put STJ NFPs in for. I really wouldn't. I mean, unless they're athletes, that's like a completely different approach. Or if they're academics or professors, that's a different thing entirely because they're masters of the affiliative. You know, legal, uh, finance, HR, that's, that's where you put Delta Quadra people. But when it comes to ENTJs, no, that's not the case. You know, they, they take over and they, they move forward, you know, from a, from a business standpoint. And they don't, you know, they don't subject themselves to the crap that's relating to, uh, um, they don't, they don't subject themselves to, to any of that. So, you know, in venture capitalism, it's kind of like, oh, we went into debt. We have all of these investors that we are, you know, adhere to. And, and of course, STJ and NFP Quadra, ESTJs are okay with that because it's like, oh, you know, I'm loyal to someone. Oh, I'm loyal to the shareholders. That's how I could be a CEO. no. That's not how it works, folks. That is not how it works. You know, it's funny. It's funny. Like, I actually have people that hire me sometimes to psychoanalyze people who are higher up in companies so that I can tell them if they're C-suite and if their board of directors are actually, you know, mentally capable of creating an amazing company instead of finding themselves in that stupid crap of venture capitalism. You know, because do you know how much waste is created when someone has all of that, like those cash injections into a company and they go into debt because they have these investors who are also controlling them from a distance as well? Like they could be on the board of directors as investors, or maybe they have, um, you know, shareholders, whatever. It's all just control. It eliminates pragmatism. And then it becomes an affiliative fight where it's like, oh, we have to do the right thing by the by the investors, do the right thing by the shareholders. See, that's the best part about ENTJs. 
they don't give a shit about that. They care about execution and they are willing, always willing to sacrifice the shareholders for the sake of productivity and profitability. Love it. That's, that's true, that's true uh, objectivist approach instead of the venture capitalism. Venture capitalism leads to waste. I'm telling you right now, the number one result of venture capitalism is waste. It is absolute waste. Because when you give Tony the tiger the money, he's just a paper tiger. You know, give money to an ENTJ, oh wait, but the ENTJ is probably going to refuse that money because they're not going to allow you to have any say, any intellectual property, or any control over their company because it could get in the way of their freedom of choice. Oh yeah. Or their ability to execute. Oh yeah. See, I'd rather be with an ENTJ running a company than an ESTJ any day of the week. Sorry, ESTJs, you're just going to have to get used to the fact that you're nothing more than middle management. Sorry. Like, it's just, and you know what? You get to be real comfy. You can rest on your laurels while the ENTJs rest on their merits. Preach it. Sorry, ESTJs. I just got to be frank. You guys, for some reason, you know, you, you think you can play it safe and follow the rules. And then you, and then you like, judge all those little hotshot upstarts that come into your company. And it's like, ah, you haven't been here as long as I have. Because that's how ESTJs reward people. They reward people and expect to be rewarded based on time served not actually skills and capability. It's so frustrating. And it, it's almost to the point where ESTJs oftentimes are willing to sell their souls for the sake of titles and laurels instead of actually putting in the work and going all out on merit, okay? Because that's, that's the difference. And I, and no offense to ESTJs, I have not met an ESTJ entrepreneur or CEO who is not resting on their laurels who is not trying to do the right thing by the shareholders, right? No, shareholders need to have a relationship with the company where they're putting everything they have into their trusting in the CEO with their money without having strings attached. Because the thing is, if you give something, if you give an ENTJ with strings attached, oh, that's the worst thing you could ever do to them because their super ego will come out and it'll give to you and it will have strings attached and they will marionette you and they will control you for the rest of your life. It's abs- like, would you like to be a slave of the ENTJ? Would you like to actually create greed in them? Well, then this is what you do, right? Don't do that. It's really annoying. So, wow, that sunshine is crazy. Um, I make an adjustment here to the camera as we, uh, I think we're probably just gonna have to bear with it for a little bit here, or maybe I could do this, actually. Yeah. Nice, cool. So, um, so yeah. Um, so their cognitive transitions. Uh, we have the uh, you know the INTP. They're able to be super pragmatic. They're able to engineer a solution to a complex problem on the fly. Now, thing is though, if ENTJs get stuck in their INTP shadow, well, that can be a problem because then. Uh, like, like a good example is an ENTJ computer programmer who's stuck at, you know, coding and trying to be like, you know, be an employee instead of an entrepreneur, you know, or, or the boss basically, which is really frustrating. ENTJs, if you're watching this, go out there and read everything Robert Kiyosaki ever said. He's an INTJ, fantastic fellow. Um, and, uh, you know, he's constantly trying to educate people about money. And uh, Robert Kiyosaki wrote, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Like, get yourself a rich dad right quick and fix that. Because let me tell you something, ENTJs. If you're just going to, like, let the affiliate people, you know, like, uh, control your life, you're out of your mind. Like, remember, you know, as soon as, as soon as you take a paycheck, you're an employee. Okay? You are an employee, you know. Uh, whereas entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs, we work for free. Don't ever think otherwise. Entrepreneurs work for free. Uh, and the sooner you get to understand how that works, the better. And don't ever think of your house as an asset. It's a liability. If, ca- if cash is leaving your hand for upkeep of your house, like even, even taxes, that is a liability. An asset is when you have cash flow. When cash is flowing into your pocket, not out of your pocket, that is an asset. So you have to really abstract yourself outside of that. That's why there's no financial education, and I'm just parroting Robert Kiyosaki when I say these things. So ENTJs, get educated now, okay? 
don't let yourselves become slaves, you know, uh, to the system. Don't let yourself get stuck in computer science degrees and think that if you follow the bouncing ball of getting credentials that you're going to get anywhere in life because you will not. I guarantee it. How about instead you read the book Crush It by Gary Vaynerchuk and get started on your journey and do it now. Uh, Don't forget, folks, you know, biblically speaking, it was written, in the last days I will pour my spirit out upon all men. Your daughters will prophesy, your young men will have visions, and your old men will dream dreams. So my question to you is, what's your excuse, huh? What's your excuse? So, and then their final side of their mind is their superego, which is the ESFJ superego. And that's like, again, that caretaking, caregiving, virtue, vice. If you guys don't know what virtue and vice is, go to season seven, like watch everything. Season seven, episode three, is the virtue and vice for ENTJs. We also want to look at uh, episode five, which is ESFJs, because I'm sorry, the ENTJ can definitely give with strings attached because, you know, uh, and I mean, so also going to ENFPs, like ENFPs, like they're, they're very charitable. What's the difference between charity and ge- generosity? I get asked this question all the time, but charity is high frequency of giving, but you're giving little tiny amounts. Whereas generosity is giving once in a while, but it's huge amounts. That's basically the difference. But for some reason, people have this problem where they give with strings attached. Don't do that. Be virtuous, ENTJs. Give and give cheerfully, but without strings attached then you wouldn't probably wouldn't be so afraid that you're a bad person because i guarantee you if you give with strings attached have that fake generosity you are a bad person wake up so anyway uh so those are the four sides of mind so let's talk about cognitive transitions so like you have uh chaotic transitions and orderly transitions so uh and those come from you know the four gateways uh now, to go deeper with chaotic versus orderly transitions, you'd kind of have to look at, uh, you know, season 19 for that, which is patreon.com forward slash csjoseph. Go to the gold tier and whatnot. Uh, sign up for gold tier. You can watch season 19. I believe ENFJ is the next episode that's about to come out. But uh, specifically speaking for uh, ENTJs, you know, you have to, you cognitive transition through your four gateway functions, and that's your hero, your inferior, your, uh, your villain, um, and your, uh, your demon function. And uh, your hero, you, you know, you're just kind of giving it right away, but your hero, like, it, your hero is like your number one tool that you use to, like, you know, get through anything in life, and it's pretty powerful, but sometimes it can get to a point where you're like, putting a hammering a a nail into a square hole it can be a a problem right it's not always going to fit you can make it fit but again there's a lot of limitations and risk there (laughs) that are probably not ideal so gosh the air quality in the central valley here of uh california is absolutely terrible sometimes like it'd be nice to get some wind i wish we had wind out here i look forward to getting back on the coast in the very near future so um so uh you know cognitive transition wise you know like you already are in your ego and developing your ego with your hero but your ego your your ego is not completely developed until you have your parent function developed obviously but you know but how do you transition how do you transition into your ISFP uh, artist. Now remember, if you go into your subconscious, you're actually gaining yourself more happiness, whereas when you go into your shadow, you're gaining yourself more maturity, right? It's different, right? And then as you, you know, master your ego, you're getting more responsibility, personal responsibility, etc. But uh, at the end of the day, you know, you still, you know, everyone wants to be happy. Everyone has to get in their subconscious. And that's why, you know, midlife crisis happens specifically because a person has not gotten over their inferior function. I can even feel mine coming on pretty soon, actually. And I need to give myself more time specifically to be able to fight my midlife crisis. And it's coming. I already know know exactly what it's about and I already know exactly what I have to do. I just need the time to do it. And this is what and this is what your brain forces you to do when you hit midlife crisis is that it forces you to take time it'll destroy your entire life because your the cognitive orbit set up between your inferior function and your demon function 
if your inferior function is unhappy, your demon will come out and your demon will light a nuclear bomb and reset your life for you just to guarantee that your inferior function has the ability to come out. Um, you know, as uh, an ENTJ that I knew, you know, after they were like rising up really high in the corporate world and, and doing such a really good job, uh, she ended up having back surgery, uh, which is really bad. And then she ended up having suicide attempts, but then she went full artist mode. She went full ISFP mode and started developing her ISFP side of her mind because that's the only way that she could cope with the problems that she was facing. She became a tattoo artist and she became a really good one at that. Um, and, uh, so yeah, but uh, you know, again, transitions are absolutely important. If you don't master your gateway functions, uh, you won't be able to transition in a healthy way. And you can you can transition in an unhealthy way, which you know, for the for the second gateway function, transitioning into your second gateway, well, that's kind of more like uh, well, transitioning in your second gateway, it's it's all about fear, right? Are you, are you living in fearlessness or are you not living in, or are you afraid? And, you know, sometimes people can hit, like, you know, an ENTJ is they're afraid of being a good person or not, you know, afraid of whether or not they're a good person. And if they get pre- hit pretty hard, maybe they get criticized by someone else telling them that they're a bad person, like I just did five minutes ago, they get really insecure and then they go into their artist side and they could react very negatively, get very ragey, living in the moment, like, you know, screw you, I'm just gonna do what I want. And they can get into like some real sensual behavior. This could even lead to drug use in some cases, um, you know, or even uh, overt sexual behavior. Um, I knew one ENTJ at one point in time, he was in a relationship with a woman for like seven plus years, but then just decided that he wanted to like, you know, hang around with an 18 year old even though that 18 year old was with another woman at the time and then that just completely blew up in his face and he almost lost his entire reputation for it you know and that's because of that you know fi inferior insecurity and uh you know being told that he's not good enough he's not good enough he's not good enough even though he had all the concrete evidence in the world to prove that yes he does have something to show for it he is absolutely worth it but his TE hero just refuses to believe it because the insecurity within his FI inferior. So the introverted feeling inferior, his sense of morals, he didn't feel like a, mo- a moral enough person. And because he didn't feel like a moral enough person, well, then that caused, you know, a lot of, a lot of issues, right? So, um, which led to these really poor sexual behaviors on his part. Um, and ultimately leads to cheating and and the like. Uh, So, you know, that that can be a problem, right? So, anyway, how do you, I mean, how do you, how do you get out of that? Well, you you obviously just start not being afraid, you know, and, and start, you know, having physical proof and keep tracking of your proof that you are a good person. Keep track of every single way that you're generous as an ENTJ. See, that's the thing about ENTJs. They get so forgetful with their SI trickster that if an ENTJ has not developed the skill to write things down, like with Evernote or with uh, MindNote or uh, Notepad++ or a tablet computer or their phone or a notepad or whatever, if they are not doing these things, like if they're straight up not doing these things, well... That could be a serious issue, you know, like, because they need, they need to have them, uh, like, well, and like, brain fart, it's probably because, like, I'm exhausted and I've only had a few hours of sleep, again, I haven't been sleeping much recently, um, not sleeping well, I think I'll take a melatonin when I get home or something. But yeah, um, you know, uh, they have to have concrete proof to show for it at the end of the day. So ENTJs, they have these memory tools and they start keeping track of all the good things that they've done and having creating totems, memory totems, uh, you know, because expert sensing child is all about psychometry and psychometry is when you t- pick up a, a, a physical object or a picture and all of the memories attached to that object or that picture just flood back in your mind that's called psychometry 
uh, and which is fundamentally how extroverted sensing works mechanically speaking and uh, then they're reminded of all the good things that they have done and then at that point they feel good about themselves and they're not as afraid of being a bad person because they have the physical proof of them doing act good acts and good deeds in the past which is what they need so the more often an ENTJ does that, then they do that. But it also is cool when other people around them actually remember and reward them for all of the good things that they've done, and they reward the ENTJ with loyalty. This is why ENTJs are so afraid of being abandoned, because they think that the sign of anyone abandoning them is proof, physical proof, that they are a bad person, and they just can't handle it. That's why they have to be really careful with people that they let, you know, that they have sexual relationships with specifically because of that. And it's even harder on women because they're so, that the ENTJ is such a masculine type. It's really hard on ENTJ women. So, um, so based on that, you know, it goes even further. Um, so by, by, by taking the time to actually record, you know, all the good things they've done, they can go into their artist side. Uh, and when they, in a healthy way, and they've gotten over their fear, and when they're, when they're in their artist side, then they become this amazing artist. And like, I knew an ENTJ who was a fantastic Hollywood film producer. Uh, then he started uh, producing film for A-list recording artists. Absolutely fantastic fellow. Uh, obsessed with Red Camera and that entire company. Uh, and, uh, like he had, he had a bunch of equipment. Uh, started off as a rental company, and then he started actually producing his own films, and absolutely fantastic. And ENTJs are are wonderful at filmmaking. Uh, even Ryan Johnson, who directed uh, Star Wars: The Last Jedi, uh, and and the film Looper with Bruce Willis, that guy he's an ENTJ, and I like Ryan Johnson. I like his style, but I guess that would make sense because I'm an NTP and content he creates is very NT, like NTPs are his ideal audience basically. Now granted I realize that Star Wars Last Jedi is not everyone's favorite movie and it definitely has some severe weaknesses to it but at the same time I think it was a very artistic Star Wars and I think he did a great job because as my INFJ mentor had pointed out to me it was the most visually appealing Star Wars anyone has ever seen um, and uh, he's absolutely right. But even then, you can make the same argument because George Lucas, who I maintain is also an ENTJ, when he created Star Wars, the first three films, all of them were visually ahead, uh, you know, of their time as well, completely visually ahead. At least, you know, from an ENTJ, he had an NP, you know, Lawrence Kasdan, assisting him with the vision of the writing of the film while George Lucas worked on the aesthetics. And that's why they were the dynamic duo and the first three films were so successful. And then the next three films, which was episodes one through three, were not so successful because George Lucas didn't have all of the, that writing capability behind him. And that's why, from a writing standpoint, those films seem to have suffered. You know, it just, it just, it just goes to show that, like, one man can't do it all. They really can't. And honestly, guys, everyone has to humble themselves and realize that. I mean, Napoleon needed to, but he didn't humble himself. And because of that, he thought he was all that in a bag of chips, and he lost he lost a, a Waterloo. And that's a severe issue. The NTJs need to develop that humility. And they do that by keeping track of their good deeds. And maybe even creating a standard or a principle or a system around them proving that they are a good person through generosity uh, and then keeping track of that so that they never have to worry about whether or not they're a bad person specifically because they have that system created. It just takes all the insecurity and all the fear away. It's also really nice when someone that they're in a relationship with comes up to them and says, you know, hey, I think really highly of you. You're such a good person. You've always done this for me. You've always done this for me. And then they're rewarded with that loyalty to that person. So that's the cognitive transition for ISFP. Cognitive transition for INTP, well, that's more of a worry. That's worry. And that's when the villain function comes out, and that's introverted thinking. ENTJs are worried, worried that what they think is not actually true, that their thinking is incorrect, that they're thinking about things incorrectly. And this is why they always have to go to other TI users, or anyone for that matter, but mostly TI users, and listen to multiple sources of thinking to be able to tell them whether or not their ideas are actually correct. 
you know, and George Lucas had this figured out pretty well with Lawrence Kasdan, you know, when it comes to uh, the writers uh, for the original Star Wars films. Um, because then he didn't have to worry about that because he was able to outsource a lot of that thinking, you know, to a writing visionary, you know. And I think Lawrence Kasdan might actually be an INFP in the process, actually. And if that's the case, that's pretty cool. Um, uh, you know, kind of like how George R. Martin is, you know. But uh, but anyway, like, uh, just, you know, understand that, you know, there's there's a lot of, people have a lot of creative genius out there, but again, not everyone can do it all at once. But, you know, and George Lucas, you know, he engineered a lot of solutions for Star Wars, uh, special effects and the visuals and the aesthetics, and a lot of, you know, those things that he did uh, were absolutely, um, they were visionary, they were, they were cutting, you know, cutting edge, completely cutting edge, to the point that those films, like even today, by 2019, 2020 standards in terms of visual effects by movies, while those films are still dated, those films are watched all the time because they're so far ahead of their time. And that's because the INTP shadow of George Lucas, uh, you know, engineering all the awesome, cool special effects and aesthetics necessary, uh, you know, coming up with a vision behind that, basically. And that's what he did. It was all about the systems and the effect and the aesthetics, just like Ryan Johnson. But Ryan Johnson made the same mistake George Lucas made uh, with the three, uh, with Star Wars episodes one through three, with Star Wars episode eight. He was not relying on other people to do the writing. This is why ENTJs, when they do writing for films and whatnot, that's why it could come off really campy instead of like something that's really, really deep. Because they're trying for depth, but they're being so shallow with it because of SC Child. They don't have that expert intuition depth that they just absolutely need that really makes the characters come out and come to life like George R. R. Martin does with his books. And don't tell me about, don't blame George R.R. George R. R. Martin, please, for the ending of Game of Thrones. That He had nothing to do with those final seasons, just so you guys know. They didn't even bring him on to fix the problem. Well, at least Disney figured out with Star Wars that they should probably bring on George Lucas and bring him on as a consultant to help them fix their problems after Episode Eight. It's funny. They're solving the problem caused by an ENTJ with yet another ENTJ. I wonder how that's going to work. Um, no offense to Disney, but really, it just comes around. It just comes down to writing. But having George Lucas there, and he's much older and wiser, I'm sure he'd absolutely be very good uh, contributor to make sure Star Wars Episode Nine is pretty cool. Um, because I'll be straight. You know, if the rumors about Episode Nine are true. I'll be absolutely triggered, uh, you know, when it comes out. I don't want to ever hear Emperor Palpatine literally tell Rey or Kylo Ren that he wants them to rule together. I never, ever want to hear that. That would be horrible. And I hope that's not in the film. So, anyway. But, you know, they get so worried about what they think. And so instead, like, to get rid of that worry, all they have to do is make sure that they have a lot of research and a lot of references, and they actually take the time and have the self-discipline to take the time to do the research, get into a program, get trained, get information, get knowledge, get systems. I had an ENTJ coaching client re recently tell me, quote, I am always in a program, end quote. So she'll go through a program, she'll finish the program, and she'll get into another one. It's always consistent. So like I'm saying, ENTJs always keep track of uh, the good things that you do, you always need to be in a program. Always, always. Continuous improvement, Kaizen. You know, you need to like seriously wear Kaizen constantly, constantly. Wear it, own it, because it's who you are. If you're not in a program as an ENTJ, a training program of some kind at all times, or at least reading books at all times, what are you doing? So do it, uh, and then you will be able to transition healthfully into your INTP. If you're not transitioning healthfully and just relying on the affiliative school education system, you're going to end up as an extremely unhappy full stack web developer or full stack developer and stuck in INTP shadow, super mature, but super unhappy. And you're probably not even getting laid either because like, let's be straight, you know, um, you know, chances are, you know, 
an ENTJ in their ego or in their ISFP is more likely to get laid than when they are in their INTP shadow. Let's be straight, you know. So keep that in mind. Seriously, keep that in mind. Always be in a program. And then as a result, you'll be able to transition and use your shadow and gain higher amounts of wisdom and maturity as a result uh, because you're always making sure that you're being educated and you're writing everything down. Again, memory tools are the key to success for ENTJs and you can have that and have healthy cognitive transitions. Now let's talk about the superego. What does the superego transition look like? Well, the superego, it gets a little complicated, but basically when an ENTJ knows for a fact that they're being a good person that uh, and that FI inferior gets crushed by an external uh, source, like they get unjustly criticized, then they go ESFJ superego and it comes out like this person who's, you know, like really, really caring, like, yeah, I'll take care of you. I'll take care of you here, you know, eat this. And it's like a last meal because the meal kills them because it's infested with parasites and they die slowly. And the ENTJ just gets to take the sadistic joy in watching their prey die slowly over time in absolute pure torture, right? And that's, you know, or, or the ESFJ, uh, ESFJ superego also does like it will literally sleep with uh, the wives of men that have screwed them over just to be like, see, I got them to want me, not you, right? Which is really, really screwed up, but they do that too. Uh, also, another way ESFJ superego comes out, uh, women underneath them in companies, uh, they will create a culture where they allow women to sleep to the top, basically, in that, uh, you know, superego standpoint. And this, this can actually happen when you have an ENTJ CEO who has a board of directors that is not loyal to them whatsoever, or even shareholders that are not loyal to the leadership of the ENTJ. And it's like, well, why do I even bother trying to good, do the good thing around here? And then they just give themselves over to this debaucherous, you know, point of view with this ESFJ superego. And then they binge on all of the sex of all of the female workers underneath them at their company because it's like, well, why bother doing the good thing? Why bother being a good person? There's no point, you know. You know, I, I, I go out of my way to be good, so why bother being good anymore? Because you obviously don't think that I'm doing a good job here, even though I know I am. It's not fair. So to avoid that, the ENTJ needs to not only, like we said before, keep track of all the good things that they've done, but they also need to actually show it to other people not in a way that comes off like their show-offs, but show it to others in such a way where those people have come to understand, uh, um, you know, that, you know, they have to, like the ENTJ has to learn how to prove, you know, that, hey, I've been loyal to being a good person, right? And you really need to appreciate me for being a good person and making sure that I have that super high moral standard instead of you just judging me all the time, you know, and I guarantee you that's probably how Graham Stephen feels right now, you know, with his thing, at least, you know, he's free, you know, from his, you know, and doesn't have to deal with, you know, the corporate backlash of a board of directors or, um, uh, you know, shareholders and all that crap and he's absolutely free, you know what I'm saying? And then he just has to keep track of him being a good person and then always be in a program and stay educated at all times, you know, and not an affiliative program, something that you find at like college, but like something that you'd find from like Joe Soto or, uh, you know, all these, uh, uh, or Taki Mora or you are talking more, et cetera. Like these, these types of people, right? Not, or the Russell Brunson's of the world, not something that you find in a, in a college, in an affiliative institution. It would be from pragmatics, uh, fellow pragmatics, et cetera. So just uh, talking about strategies, although they can, you know, get good strategies from affiliative teachers as well, provided those affiliative teachers aren't part of the collegiate system or the standard narrative education system, et cetera. So yeah, um, so that will keep the demon at bay. Um, and because uh, then, you know, the demon's like, okay, hey, you know, you're being a good person. And then the demon's like, okay, uh, you know, you have humility, you're being personally responsible, and you have wisdom, so okay, I respect you now, then that I'll be willing to go become angelic, and then at that point in time, the path to enlightenment begins for the ENTJ, and that's basically where the content for season 19, episode 3 starts and picks up, which 
which you can find on uh, Patreon Gold Tier if you're a Gold Tier member. So, uh, but yeah, folks, that's uh, that's it for uh, the ENTJ uh, cognitive uh, transitions. If you like this video, um, hopefully your guys are already subscribed to the channel. This is an email only lecture. Thank you for letting us send you emails. Uh, we definitely try to go our, out of our way to create content for the emails. So it's not like spam and whatnot. Uh, and, and thank you guys for giving us that opportunity. We really appreciate it. Um, hopefully the, uh, the application, the app that we're making is gonna be uh, developing well and coming out soon and meeting deadlines uh, such that, you know, as a result of that, we can finally get ourselves in a situation where I can like start handing out alpha keys and beta keys. And maybe we'll do that over email, I'm not sure. So. But yeah, folks, if you, want to, if you guys want to keep getting these lectures, uh, stay subscribed to our email and uh, also tell your friends because uh, the only way to get access to these lectures are through email. So, uh, but anywho, uh, thank you all uh, for watching and uh, I'll see you guys tonight.